the landscape is stunning. In the shadow of Africa's second highest peak, Mount Kenya, the Olepejeta Conservancy will seem the idyllic place to spend one's remaining years. Home to a burgeoning wildlife population able to wander the 36,000 hectares freely. This place serves as a protective care to the world's last surviving male of the northern white rhino species. Sudan the rhino spends his life under armed guard behind bars. Sudan is one of the northern white rhinos that we have here on the Conservancy. The northern white rhinos came into Kenya in, 2000 and, in 2009 and uh, there were four then. Uh, two females and uh, two males. The death of the other male northern white rhino, Angalifu, in December 2014 left 42-year-old Sudan with the Herculean task of continuing the lineage of the northern whites. When, when Dr. They... Martin Mulama, the chief conservation officer at Olpejeta, explains. You know, number of uh, mating recorded Unfortunately, none has translated into a pregnancy. So we then decided uh, that the best thing would be to bring in a, a southern white bull and expose that to one of the northern white rhino females. Um, that was done. And uh, of course, it was done based on the advice of, uh, of the management committee. There is a committee that actually oversees the, the management of this uh, northern white rhino, because it's a project to us. But the hopes of continuing the pure northern white line were dashed when it was realized that Najin could not sustain a pregnancy because of her weak hind legs. Her daughter Fatu is infertile, and Sudan's age means his sperm is low quality. Still, conservationists consider him and his DNA valuable enough to put Sudan in an enclosure. His horns were also cut to make him unattractive to poachers. The rapid decline is attributed to rampant poaching and political anarchy in their natural habitat. Most of them were found in the wild in countries that have seen a long-term conflict. The Democratic Republic of Congo the Central African Republic, and Sudan. For 44-year-old Mohamed Doyo, the possibility of Sudan's death is closer at heart than many of his colleagues at Olpejeta. Apart from working with rhinos since 1989, he was here when the 1.2-ton rhino was relocated to Africa six years ago. I I don't do this for money. I've loved animals since my school days. I've not done any other work apart from dealing with rhinos. That is what makes me happy. I love them because they are just animals. They are harmless and they don't even talk. Yet they are mistreated and hunted down by poachers. The father of three boys admits the time he spent with these pachydams, he has grown to love them like family. I've raised the orphan rhinos whose mothers have been killed by poachers. We've spent the nights with them in the bush. I would spend the night beside her. She had two blankets and had two of my own. When she was hungry, she'd push me with her horn to wake me up, like the way a child wakes her father when she wants to pee. So I take these rhinos like my own children. But the northern whites may well be extinct in the next 10 years. Science now is the only way to save the species, something management at Olpejeta are considering. As an emerging technique, uh, we just need to be uh, careful that we have looked at all the risks involved and therefore we can get a signal on when we can start uh, doing that. Beyond the fate of the northern white species, there are still threats from poachers on the other species in Olpejeta. Still, the Olpejeta team continues its fight to preserve and protect endangered species like Sudan. Decades of rampant poaching have been fueled by demand from Asian countries like China and Vietnam for the supposed medicinal benefits of rhino horn. South Africa alone 
poachers killed 1,215 rhinos in 2014, an increase over 20% from 2013. However, not all are in support of poaching for medicine. Dr. Li Chuan is a Chinese doctor who uses Chinese traditional medicine. And this is illegal. I have to follow Kenya law, follow the Chinese law. Yeah, it's our obligation, you know, to help people. Don't think it's illegal. With the threat of poaching still rife, Najin and her daughter Fatu are kept under armed protection while Sudan will end his days in protective custody. This, his name is Sudan, it's really heartbreaking. But even sadder is the fact that he, he has to spend his, the rest of his life, the rest of his few remaining years here and closed because living free is too dangerous. And it's something that even us human beings will not want to wish on anyone. Question is to the poachers, if somebody offered you money to cut off the hand of your child, would you do it for money?